We are now just 39 days away from election night in the USA for the election between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. We are not going to be predicting this election based on any one source. Instead, we are going to be basing it off of numerous sources, numerous facts, and in general, just common sense is what we're going to be basing this basing this map off. So, starting with, starting with trying to fill in these two states down here, Hawaii and Alaska are going to, both going to be safe for their candidate, as and California will easily be going to Kamala Harris as well. The Oregon will be a lot closer. I predict that it will probably go to her by just a lean margin. We look at here in the previous election, Joe Biden did win it by 16.1%, but in the previous election, it only went to Clinton by 11%. And if we go to the polling averages, if we go to if we go here, I and mean, we can see that Kamala Harris leads by only 5% in this state. So I predict that it will go to her by just a lean margin. Washington will probably be a lot. It will probably be a likely state. Again, this is another state that was easily won by Joe Biden before, and Clinton also won it by a solid margin. We can see here, however, that Washington this time is only predicted to go to her by by about 12%, but this is an, obviously a very old poll conducted from way back in the last year. We just don't have any other polling from this state from any, at any point, but the only poll that we do have suggests that the state will not be going to Kamala Harris by anywhere near, as a, anywhere near the amount that the state went to Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. So we will be leaving, putting the state as likely. Now let's fill in all the states that we can expect to go where to Donald Trump. All these states will go to him, minus the second district of Nebraska. All right, let's go to our first battleground state. That is Nevada. We can do, we can see here that this state is very close. We have one percent margins across the whole board, most leaning toward leaning towards Kamala Harris, and we can just straight up just reject this poll from Bloomberg right here. Uh, seventh is seven percent lead is absolutely botched. There we got a new we got numerous new polls from actually from a lot of these states, and Bloomberg is one of the polls that we were getting a lot of, and they are just completely they just don't even make sense at this point. Seven percent lead in a battleground state for and everything else is one percent. Look look at this. All the way down to here. Of course, this is from a while ago, but then we go up to here more recently. Two, four, one, 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 tie seven. That's just no. That's it's obviously that is completely botched and biased. We all know Bloomberg is an extremely left leaning poll, and they are well known for just completely overestimating Democrats beyond beyond any sort of common sense. So no, we will not be listening to that. Listening to common sense, or I predict that the state will be very close to hard to decide, but I can say it will probably go to Kamala Harris by a tilt margin. It will be extremely close, however. She will she will also win the states of Cal of Colorado and New Mexico, probably by lean margins. Colorado might be might be a likely state, but we just don't have much from this state whatsoever anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Both these states will be will be going to her by lean margins. Let's go to Arizona now. All right, here Arizona, it's not it's it's really pulling away. We only have one poll that has Kamala's up in this entire state, and uh, no surprise, it is Bloomberg, and the, not not listening to them. Uh, they've been just so wrong in the past that it's re honestly kind of ridiculous. Like they, they are the, Bloomberg is the one that in 2016 they predicted that Donald Trump had no chance of winning whatsoever. Like they literally said that Clinton had a hundred percent chance of winning. Like they didn't, they they give Donald Trump no chance of victory. Well, we all know how that went. Like that's how completely out of touch with reality Bloomberg is. So this is will be re this poll will be, will be rejected. We have all these polls that have Donald Trump up by a, by a huge margin. The last time we got an actual reliable poll with Kamala Harris winning in this state was by Fox News all the way back in August. We are we are approaching October now. So clearly, this state is, is the clear... Donald Trump is going to easily win this state. And I'm actually going to go on a win here and say he's going to win this state by a likely margin. So he will win this state by more than 5%. So this state will be... This state is no longer tilt. It's no... And this state, this state, which was, by the way, leaning towards Kamala Harris briefly... At some point back in August, by 0.2%, it's just not close anymore. This state is, it's not lean towards Kamala Harris. It's not till, it's not lean. I'm going to say it's going to be a likely state for Donald Trump. Texas will also be the same thing. They will also be likely like that. Let's also now fill in all the states that we know about that we also, again, know will be going to Donald Trump extremely easily. All right, there we go. Uh, he also in the state of Indiana. He will... Iowa and Ohio 
will probably be a little bit more competitive. I have I just kind of wrote them off as solidly red, but to be more accurate, they probably will go. They will probably go to him by smaller margins. It went to it went to I went to went to Trump by eight percent in twenty twenty. by in Ohio by, by the same margin, and it, he will probably win the state by more than that. But I doubt he'll win it by more than fifteen percent. So. I'm gonna put them as likely, but there's no doubt that Donald Trump will win these states. Kamler's will probably win this will probably win the second district of Nebraska by a tilt margin. Donald Trump already at this point has a clear lead with almost 200 electoral votes at this point. We are now gonna we are not also gonna fill in the state. We are gonna fill in the state of Illinois as a likely Democratic state as well. There's this this state is not very competitive. It's a, it is a reliable Democratic state. Let's fill in the state of Minnesota now. Minnesota will also be a will be a lean Democratic state, and we can see here in Minnesota we do have new poll from the Rasmussen reports. Harris has Harris only up by three percent in this state. The average is four point seven, and we can see here the state is trending closer. It was five percent, six percent. Now it's only down to now it's down to just three percent. Overall, Conyers is definitely probably going to win this state. It's hard to really see this state flipping red. Let's bear in mind that this state has not gone red. Since 1972, this state has not gone red since 1972. Even Reagan, when he completely turned the whole country red, could not win Minnesota. Even Reagan could not do this. He, if Mondale won the state of Minnesota by 0.18%. So this is how blue Minnesota has been for so long. The state has not gone red a single time since then. But, but this time, Donald Trump does have a chance of winning it, but I still think it will go to Kamala Harris by a lean margin. So between 2 and 5%. Let's go to the state of Wisconsin now. Alright, Wisconsin is where things start to get interesting. And once again, we're just going to be completely blocking this one out. This does not count. We have a tie. The most recent poll that we have has come has, uh, has it listed as a complete tie. The one before, the Hill and Emerson has it up has Trump up by 1%, which is quite surprising because the Hill and Emerson tends to tends to lean slightly to the left, so they have Trump up by up by 1%. These other polls all have Harris up by 1% as well. Insider advantage has it up by 2, and coefficient has it up by as 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 a tie. So it is quite close. The average is only is under 1%. Donald Trump is catching up in the state. We can see here that if we look down here, Kamala has had a strong lead the state at one point. She was up by she was up by 2% in the state at one point, but it is now narrowed to below 1%. You can see here, it dropped to 0 0.7, but now it's up to 0 0.9. But overall, the state is getting closer. And on top of that, here's the big deal. Let's go back, look, 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 look where Joe Biden was. And he was, at this point, at this at this point in the 2020 election, he was up by 6.5% in the state on September 27, 2020. And if we actually look where he was at the end of, at the, end of the uh, um, campaign, he was up by 6.7%. He won this state by just 0.7%. Wisconsin is so obviously way, way, way overestimated by the Democrats. This state is absolutely has a great chance of going to Donald Trump. And this is where, by the way, I should mention this, this is where things are going to, this, this is where this is going to be felt, which I mentioned in my previous election video. By the way, you guys were asking me if this was outdated. Uh, it's not. I mean, it's right on here. It's dated as September twelfth, twenty twenty four. So this is not outdated. I mean, it's not. It's a. It's about a. It's a. It's not. It's not two days ago. But it's not by any means outdated. The information on here still very much so is, you know, legit for today. You know, it's only like it's only about fifteen days ago. So this is everything on the everything on here would absolutely be you know sufficient to be used today. You know, it wasn't two days ago, but it wasn't a year ago either. So this is this the all the information on here is absolutely still modern. So, anyways, let's get back to the map now. But oh, I was I was gonna say that down here, I, I mentioned this was this was the big um, deal about this election was right here. This is what's gonna be in the minds of Americans. This is what this is what Trump wants to be in the minds of Americans when they go to cast their ballot. And this is this is right here. This will be what decides this election right here. I mentioned that in my last video, and we can see here that he that Donald Trump very famously or not famously, he's very smartly used Ronald Reagan. And in his ads, to point out the fact that it, what these issues right here. So people, he doesn't want this to be in the back of people's minds when they go to cast their ballot. He wants it to be on their mind, top of their mind when they go to cast their ballot. And it's this fact, it's this stuff right here. The majority of Americans think that the market is bad, family situation is bad, and the economy is bad. 
Donald Trump wants them to think really hard on this when they go to cast their ballot. And by the way, well, by the way, while we while we are at it, I also mentioned in my last video. I showed you I showed you this chart as well, and I literally saw literally just saw, I literally just saw two ads like a few minutes ago before I started recording this video. Uh, for they, they were two Kamala Harris, two Kamala Harris, uh, two yeah they were two Kamala Harris ads on YouTube that I saw. Both of them in, in both of those ads they they were different ads, but both of them were were all about this. They were all about challenges for protective rights. So in other words. Kamala Harris is really pushing the fact that hey, vote for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, support abortion. I'm gonna get abortion rights back that Roe v. Wade had. I'm gonna get that back, and I'm gonna make that law. Here's, but that is the problem with that. That is not gonna win her this election. We can see here these three things right here: inflation and the cost of living is the number one. It's the number one thing that Americans care about in this. It's the number one issue that they care about in regards to this election. The economy and job market is, but is behind that. And we already saw the job market was was. People said job market is bad, so Donald. So that means they're more likely to vote for Donald Trump. Immigration is third place. Even even immigration is considered to be a way bigger issue than than abortion is. In fact, look at this: 55, 55, 50, 27. So this Kamala Harris is really trying to run off of this, but that's not going to win her this election. Not at all. She's not going to win the election off, off of the, based off of that whatsoever. And we actually go up here. Look at that. We can already can see here. Don't the only things, the only only issues that she's winning in is environmental protection and reproductive rights. That's it. Every other issue goes to Trump by large margins. Inflation, which is right here, has, Donald Trump is up by 14% on in terms of him being trusted to actually sort the issue. The economy and job market is right here. He's up by 14 as well. So we can clearly see that when it comes to the actual issues, uh, Donald Trump, when it comes to the three biggest issues, they favor Donald Trump significantly. And these are the three biggest issues, and they, and they, and they all go to him by large margins. So considering that, and by the way, all this down here is going to be, this down here is going to be felt, there it is, right here, it's going to be felt in these three states, right here. These three states, the blue wall states, this is where it's going to be felt at. So, and because we know, and so because of the fact that Kamala Harris is only leading in this state by 0.9%. When Joe Biden led in this state by almost 7% and he almost lost this state, because I'm going to say that Donald Trump is going to win this state, not a tilt, by a, by a, a lean margin. If if she's being overestimated by any sort of amount that com, that um Joe Biden was four years ago, then he's going to win this state easily. If she's being overestimated, she's, if she is being overestimated and only winning the state by that much, then Donald Trump will easily win the state of Wisconsin. Let's go on to Michigan. So we do know that Michigan is out of out of all the states, it is the most likely one to go to Kamala Harris out of all the battleground states, just because of the fact that it is the most liberal naturally. Uh, Bloomberg actually is kind of kind of reliable for this one. They have Harris up by three percent. Honestly, I'm kind of, I'm generally quite quite shocked that Bloomberg just doesn't have Harris up by like twenty five percent in this state. How can okay? How can Bloomberg have Harris winning in this state by three percent, but Bloomberg has she, her winning in Nevada by seven? Like that makes no that doesn't even make any sense. Nevada is a way more conservative state overall than Michigan is. But anyways, going back to Michigan now. We can see here the three percent is here, three percent here, three percent is a reasonable margin. Uh Harris is leading the state by one point eight percent. The only poll that we have that has Donald Trump up by one percent is insider advantage. So let's take into account everything, and let's also take into account everything everything that we know from Atlas. Everything we know from Atlas and the issues that are important, I still think Congress will be with, will take the state, but not but not by a lane, but by a by, by a tilt margin. So she'll, she'll take it by less than one percent. But at the end of the day, I do believe that she will take the state of Michigan. Uh, we know we know what Florida is going to look like. We're going to quickly fill in Florida. It will be a likely Republican state. We're going to leave the states the states of Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York for last because we got some stuff to talk about with those states. Let's go to Georgia real quick. And Georgia again, just like just like Arizona, Donald Trump is really running away with it in this state. Georgia is becoming less and less, um, it's becoming way less um, competitive. It's no, it you can see Donald Trump is really running away with it. And they say we don't have any poll. We have one poll that has Kamala Harris winning in this state, and quite shockingly, CBS, the very left leaning poll, has Trump up by two percent. Fox News, a right wing or a right a right wing. Le leaning poll has hairs up by three percent so that's actually quite an interesting reversal right there but 
Looking at everything else overall, we have 4 and 3% here. I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say that Donald Trump will easily win the state by a lean margin. North Carolina, let's go to North Carolina now. North Carolina, it got really close just a little bit ago. We saw here, Donald Trump's lead dropped to just 0.1%, but since then it grew back to, zero, to, to over a percentage point very rapidly. We hear several polls that, the only poll that we have that has hair up by any reasonable margin is again Bloomberg, which we don't trust. The Hill and Emerson has hair up by 1%, and the and Elon University has it up by 1%. That, that, that was back on the 13th, however. The newest poll is all of Donald Trump, all of Donald Trump winning. So it's clear that Donald Trump is the favorite to win in this state, and he will, again, probably take the state by a lean margin. We're going to quickly fill in all these states up here. This state will easily go to Kamala Harris, and she will easily win the second district. Donald Trump will win the first district. And then she will also easily win Vermont. Vermont is the most, by far, the most liberal state in the whole country. It will There's nothing to talk about with that state whatsoever. She will take the state of Maryland by a solid margin. The states of New Jersey will be, and New Jersey and, New, and Delaware will be likely for Kamala Harris. District of Columbia will easily go to her. New Hampshire is the only state that, she, that really will give her, but Donald Trump will really give Kamala Harris a run for her money. By the way, Donald Trump's already winning the will already win the election at this point, but whatever. Um this is the only one where Donald Trump will really give her a run for the money because if we just look back here. And we actually look at New Hampshire right now. We have okay, this is not true at all. This state has not been this even even Joe Biden won this state by just seven point four percent. The and Kamala Harris is in every sense of the word. She's a weaker candidate than Joe Biden in every single way. She's in, she's a she's a weaker candidate than even Hillary Clinton, and Hillary Clinton lost to, to Donald Trump. If Joe if Joe Biden only won this state by seven point two percent, then there's no way she's going to win it by more than that. Hillary Clinton almost lost this state. She won New Hampshire by just zero point three percent. So with that, we will be awarding the state to Kamala Harris, but only by a lean margin. All right. So we filled in all those states. Donald Trump at this point already wins the election. But now let's talk about the, some of the big stuff. Let's throw Virginia. Virginia is the state we have probably the least to talk about. But it's it's getting interesting. So Virginia right now, early voting has started. And so far, it's favoring Donald Trump. But if, wait, let's just go up here. If we go to Virginia, we can see here that we do have a new poll here that says that Kamala is, is up by just 3% in the state. She does lead overall by 4.8%. This is a state that Joe Biden easily won by 9.4%. Hillary Clinton only won by four by five point four percent, so she will probably lose. She will probably win the state if she does win it at all. She will probably win it by less than Hillary Clinton won the state. But um, we do have to talk about this. Okay, first of all, this Hill and Emerson poll of plus eight percent is completely destined. There is that is just not going to happen. The state is not that blue anymore. They were they elected a Republican governor, Republican attorney general, and a Republican lieutenant governor in the state. So with that in mind, it's clear that Virginia has shifted significantly to the right, and it very well could go to Donald Trump. That being said, I still think Congress is the favorite to win, by, in, but not by much. If she does win the state, she will probably win it by a tilt margin, at best. So, whoa, what the? Don't look at that. So she will probably win the state by a tilt margin if she even wins it. But Donald Trump is clearly has a chance of winning the state. Again, early voting has started. He's already leading in this state, according to early voting. So we'll have to see what happens, but Virginia is very well in Donald Trump's in Donald Trump's play. This state has not gone red since two thousand and four, which is also also ranked as the last time that Nevada went red. So we'll see what happens, but it's going to be close. Okay, let's move on to Pennsylvania now. Pennsylvania is definitely going to be one of the most deciding states in this entire election. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris both need to both need to, need to win this state, especially since Kamala Harris has pretty much lost all hope of winning Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. She was able to get it really close, but now it's Donald Trump has simply pulled too far ahead at this point. Her best at this point her best bet would, would be to try to hold on to these three states and try to win the election. But Donald Trump clearly has a strategy here of he's trying to force her to lose her grip and have to move on and have to move out to other states like Virginia and North in New York if she wants to be able to hold a chance to win this election. He is clearly trying to Make make her chance to win this election as little as possible by, by forcing her to spread out and go all over the place instead of just focusing on these three states. But that but Donald Trump is now focusing on these three states himself. So in Pennsylvania, okay, so that was interesting. Um, RCP, RV, so RCP literally just updated right as I was trying to go to Pennsylvania. 
and it glitched out, but it's now back now. And we do have some brand new poles that literally just got put in here. And it, it's these three here. And they all have it listed as a tie. Interesting enough, Bloomberg... Okay, first of all, this doesn't count. So Bloom, we all know Bloomberg can't be trusted. So if you look at it this way, looking at it like this, Kamala, we have not had an actual poll with Kamala Harris winning in this state since all the way back on the 19th or the 11th through the 19th of September. So we've gone basically gone 10 days now with no polls saying that she is winning. It's all been nothing but ties and two, and two polls that have Donald Trump winning in this state. The average is still 0 0.4. But this is this is just a list of ties and and two two Trumps plus and two Trump pluses and one Kamala Harris plus at the very end from a, from a while ago at this point and one poll that we're not going to look at because it doesn't it can't be trusted. So looking at it like this, it's clear here that this that this state is so close that it's really hard to call. But we know that this state absolutely can be won by Donald Trump. And but there's a chance Congress will win it too. What's interesting, I should mention this, is that Donald Trump could, could has a, definitely has a chance of winning all three of these blue wall states. Which, by the way, he pulled that off in 2016. In 2016, he was able to pull that off by winning all three of the blue wall states. That has not been a thing that has happened since 1984. It was the last time that all three of the states went red, and that was Reagan when Reagan literally won the whole country. Reagan was the last president to be able to flip the, all three of the blue wall states red. And, and since then, they have been, at least one of them has been Democratic. And, and ever since 1992, all three of them have been Democratic for every single election leading up to 2016, when they all flipped back to red for Donald Trump. So everybody talked about Donald Trump. He can't do the impossible. He's not a great candidate. Well, he pulled off, a, he pulled off, a, he pulled off what every Republican could not do since Reagan. He pulled off something that Reagan, only Reagan was able to do. And just look, look, look what Reagan did. He won California, for God's sakes. So you can see here that Donald Trump absolutely can pull off the impossible. And he's done it before. And he he's absolutely very capable of doing it again. Although he probably won't win Michigan. He probably will win the states of Wisconsin. And by the way, those three, those issues that we saw from on here, they will be the most felt in the blue wall states. And specifically, they will absolutely be felt in Pennsylvania. Because the economic, the energy, and the immigration policies that Donald Trump has are very much so supported in Pennsylvania. So I predict that he will win this state by probably more than a percentage point, giving it a lean margin. Okay, we have one less to say to talk about that is the state of New York. There's a reason why I left that state for left that state for last. So we have just two polls from this state. We have the Hill and Emerson, which has commerce up by 14%. We know that the Hill and Emerson is a, is a, is a left-leaning poll. Here is that Sienna poll that I was talking about in my previous video. And I mentioned how Sienna, if they polled mostly Democrats, however, at the same time, they if you adjust that poll for the actual ratio of registered Democrats and registered Republicans in New York, Harris's lead drops to just plus 1%. 1% in this state that has not been not gone red since Ronald Reagan. He was he, this state has not gone red since Ronald Reagan. And in, in, in a state like this, Donald Trump, did these, and same thing, these states have not gone red since Ronald Reagan. So we know Donald Trump has been able to pull off what no Republican has been able to do since Ronald Reagan. And he, there's a chance he'll pull off again in New York. It's very slight, however, because this state is clearly a stronghold for the Democrats. But reason, but the, why New York? And I myself said that I think that New York, New York is definitely becoming more competitive but I said it wasn't going to be a battleground state until 2032. So give it so another eight years. Give it two. Give it two more elections, and then New York will be a battleground state. But I honestly think it's this process might be being sped up a little bit. And I think what the reason why Donald Trump could somehow be winning or not winning, but coming close in a state like New York, the reason is the illegal is the illegal legal immigration legal immigration. And now we know that Donald Trump is obviously pushing to close the border. Here's the, here's the thing, though. Donald Trump says he'll close the border, and Kamala Harris actually says the same thing. Both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are saying that they're going to close the border. Kamala Harris says that she'll do it a lot weaker than Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump obviously makes, says he'll be a lot stronger about it. But either way, both camps are saying we're going to close the border. So, but wait a minute, here's the thing. What are we going to do 
with all of the immigrants already in the country. Donald Trump says, I'll deport them. Kamala Harris didn't answer the question. She's never she's never answered that question. What are you going to do with the immigrants that are already in this country? Do you want them to become citizens? Are you trying, Do you want them to stay in the country? Or are you going to deport them? She never answered that question. And this, in the, if you remember back in the debate, this is probably the one time that I actually gave, that I actually kind of uh, thought that they anchors ask Kamala Harris the question the right way because they didn't ask hey do you think these 11 do you think having 11, 11 million people in the country is a good or bad thing uh, obviously it's a bad thing obviously having 11 million illegal immigrants is a bad thing so they, they did not ask a question like that they asked the question was not that the question was how are you going to get rid of them how are you going to deport 11 million illegal immigrants she didn't answer the question she didn't even try to answer it so clearly she either won doesn't care, or two, she actually wants these illegal immigrants to stay in the country. Let's let's actually take a let's take a look, let's take a look at this article now. So this is in New York, in this in the city of I can't read that. Some looks like, looks like French to me, but this is in New York. This is in northwestern New York. It's a it's a pretty big city. Julio Cesar Pimentel Sori, Sor, Soriano. A fugitive wanted for murder in the Dominican Republic, that's a, that's a country in the, in the, like the Caribbean, has been arrested in connection with the deaths of the family of four found in their burning home in that place, New York. Authorities allege that Soriano killed Fr Frame Obal Obaldo and all these other names and their two toddlers before, before setting their home on fire. This was, a, according to... Police Chief Scott Peters, this was a horrific scene in almost 32 years of doing this job. I have never seen anything like it. This is Labor Day. So this happened on Labor Day. This is Labor Day. It's supposed to be a joyous day, spending time with your family. This family doesn't have that anymore. Half of this family is gone in an instant. So let's get this straight. Illegal immigrant. I can't use the, the, uh, the thing for this map. That's unfortunate. What, what if I closed out of this? No, it just it doesn't let me do it. That's unfortunate. Anyways. But anyways, so illegal immigrant crosses the border, probably somewhere down. No, illegal immigrant, a man from the Dominican Republic, probably murdered who knows how many people in the Dominican Republic. He fled the country, comes to the, the mainland, comes to our border. He is not stopped. He is not checked. He is not arrested for murder and sent back to the Dominican Republic. He just walks across the border. He then makes his way across the whole country, all the way up, all the way to New York. He then goes into New York, somehow crosses across the whole state, all the way to right here. It's right, this is right in this area. This is where that city is. He gets all the way up to here. He then proceeds to murder an entire family of four, a mother, a father, and two, and two toddlers, he, he then he murders all of them using a sharp a sharp weapon and said so he stabs them all to death he then he then he then he then lights their house on fire if i'm a new yorker and i'm reading something like that i'm voting for trump <laughs> if i'm if i see something like that let's get, get un, so under this administration which is also Kamala Harris's administration they let a guy who already murdered people in a different country Enter across the board with no checks, no, no, nothing. He got across the whole country into New York. Got across the whole state of New York. He got into this city. And he then proceeded to murder a whole family, burn their house down, and did it on Labor Day. So, if I'm a New Yorker, I'm not. But if I was a New Yorker and I saw something like that, I don't think I'm voting for Kamala Harris because. Because at least Donald Trump says, if I'm if I see something like that, Donald Trump says I'm gonna get those people and get them out of here. Kamala Harris, as far as I, as far as I know, she wants them to stay here. She wants she wants those illegal immigrants to stay here. So guys like that are are gonna stay here. I don't want that. So that's why I think New York is becoming such a is is because gonna actually might be considered a battleground state in this election. I still pred I predict that Kamala Harris will win the will win the state by either a lean or a likely margin. No, I don't think it's gonna be. I give Donald Trump a ten percent chance of winning the state. Donald Trump has a ten percent chance of winning this state. So the state will be either lean or likely for her.
But either way, it's becoming way more competitive. And this is a this is a pretty good reason why. Is what is this article right here? It's Labor Day. He kills a family. He kills their kills their children. The toddlers kills them with all of them all that he does with a sharp object and then burns their house down on Labor Day. So I think that's a good example as to why New York is becoming all so much more competitive. But anyways, that's your whole map update. I predict that Donald Trump will win the election with 291 electoral votes. He will win. He will win most of the battleground states except for Nevada and Michigan. He will, and he's already and he's created two more battleground states in the form of Virginia and possibly New York. So anyway, guys, that's it for today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.